I haven't talked about climate change in quite some time on this channel, I think. And uh, uh, it, it does it, like it's one of those things where it's like I don't it's not that I don't care about it because I, I very much do. Um, I just haven't found like I, 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 I tried to my best not to over repeat things that are happening in other channels. And I know that I have. Obviously, it's it's impossible not to talk about some of the topics that other people are talking about, like Julian Assange, right? Like everybody, a bunch of people are talking about Julian Assange and more people need to talk about Julian Assange. But with climate change specifically, like there's a lot of people that have hit some of the key points and to, and I don't have anything new or interesting to add to those things. So I just kind of am like, hey, look at this thing that Lee Camp did or look at this thing that Jimmy Dore has been talking about or Ron Placone or Kim Iverson or whoever it is. Um you know, so uh, rather than me kind of add and reiterate the same points that they have made, um, I try to just amplify their voices a little bit more. But I, I will say, you know, one of the things that uh, I just saw the, a couple of days ago and I was reading the article for in, in preparation for this today is, is an article that talks about how cities are basically turning into ovens because of climate change. Right. Uh, and what they're saying is. Cities are hotter than rural areas now. Uh, the temperature within cities is going up. It's it's getting higher and higher, right? And uh, and that's because the the concrete and the blacktop and the sidewalks that we use all absorb heat, and then when this and then they and then they release that heat back up into the atmosphere, right? So they absorb and release, and they're doing this. You know, usually when that sort of stuff happens, when the sun goes down, there's not there's no more heat to absorb. And, it, and it's just like a release of heat and the temperature differential between the daytime and the nighttime will will, will take care of it. And like it, the heat doesn't linger as long as it does. Well, in cities, uh, because because of urbanization, they're absorbing so much heat, they're releasing all of this back into the into um, into the air. For way longer, right, because we have more concrete, we have more things that absorb this heat, uh, whereas in. In rural areas, there's more trees, there's more plant life, uh, and those those plants provide shade. Uh, they provide um, they provide moisture. They release into the atmosphere, right? All these things that we kind of need, and cities are 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 lacking in that because the you know I I've I've lived in I've lived in the city and I'm, I'm I'm a bit of a city boy. I'll be honest. I'm not I'm not big I'm not big on the country. Uh, I like driving through the country, but if you ask me to like live in the country, I think I would have a fucking panic attack. <laughs> I just don't deal with that kind of stuff very well. Like I'm not a great camper, you know. I, I've I've gone camping a couple of times and I've and I've moderately enjoyed it because of the company, um, but I have not enjoyed it <laughs> based on the fact that it's just camping. But I like and appreciate nature. That's my point. And, you know, there, there's all this talk about, like, building trees and urban spaces. The, the, um, the kind of folly in that plan, though, is you're, you're, you're taking a little quadrant of the city and you're, and you're building, you know, this little urban, this little green area with trees and plants and things of that sort. And that's very nice. And I'm not saying we don't need that sort of stuff because sure, why not? Right. We more trees. Great. Excellent. But the problem is that it's only concentrated in that one spot. So it's not really doing anything like in this neighborhood. And and by the way, the where I'm living now, the house that I'm living in now uh, does have wooded areas all around it. So I'm kind of in this part of the city that that is surrounded by trees and nature and things of this sort. There's like a trail like just down the street from me that I can go to uh, that I have not utilized because of, you know, being cold and shit. But I, even then, like this, this summer was excruciatingly hot, excruciatingly hot. Right. So, so the point is in areas like this, we need more trees spread out, not just concentrated in one spot. Because that's not doing particularly any good. It's nice to look at. And yes, we probably need those kind of green spaces. But but just picking a quadrant for those green spaces isn't doing much of anything. 
it needs to be all over the place. You know, it needs to kind of spread itself out a little bit more. There needs to be a little bit of um, symbiosis between uh, nature and urban development, <laughs> which capitalism won't allow because capitalism is about endless consumption. So the rural areas do end up being a little bit cooler. Not, I'm not, and I'm not saying the rural areas are completely free of climate change either. People tend to do that a lot when you bring up these sort of arguments, right? Is when you kind of have this focus point of, of just let's talk about trees and the way that they're built and why rural communities are, are less hot, less oven-like than cities are. And they go, oh, well, well, rural, yeah, yes, absolutely, 100%. I agree with you guys. <laughs> rural areas also have issues with climate change, right? Uh, we haven't even gotten into fossil fuels. I'm specifically talking about just the, the growth of, 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 uh, of flora. That's it. That's all I'm talking about right now. Uh, people people tend to have a, a, a hard time kind of conceptualizing very focused topics sometimes. And I think it's because, yes, all these topics are intersectional, but you can look at them, you know, part by part. It's it's an issue with, I think, compartmentalization of uh, information. Anyway, um, I do agree that we need more trees. I think we need a lot more trees. Uh, my girlfriend has a way better green thumb than I do. I'm, I'm not allowed to touch a lot of the plants. I might have accidentally drowned some pepper plants earlier this year. Uh, that, that might've happened. Um, so I'm not allowed to touch the plants, but there, but, but we have plants like there's plants right by the office. We have plants downstairs. Uh, we have plants in our kitchen. Like that's, that's great. We need more of that sort of stuff. Um, I also, I mean, I also feel relatively comforted when I see trees in an area. Um, I, I, I feel better about being in an environment like, but, but again, I'm not a woodsy person, right? Like if I had to go live in the woods, I would not, that's, that's just not who I, I'm not built for that shit. Um, but here's the thing, right? The, the, having more trees will help in turn. It's not the be all end all solution to, to, uh, preventing climate change and the, and the increase of temperature in our atmosphere. We already hit that point. We already hit two degrees. We, we already increased the temperature of the planet by two degrees Celsius. And now they're saying in, in another five, maybe five, maybe 10 years, it's going to go up to 4.4. It's going to increase another 4.4 degrees Celsius, at which point, you know, we're, we're looking at irreversible damage. Um, and the, and the only thing that will prevent the planet from collapsing uh, environmentally is the extinction of the species. Like the, the planet will correct itself. If we want to survive as a species, we're going to have to fucking do something about this climate change issue. Um, so, you know, what do we do about all of this? First, first of all, I think there's probably another material that we can use that probably doesn't reflect heat in the, in the, in the same capacity as the concrete does, right? It's it it doesn't need to absorb the heat. It can just reflect the heat back. Maybe that's a good idea. I don't know. I'm not. Uh, I'm. I'm. I haven't really looked into it. A friend of mine actually suggested that a couple of years ago when I was on the road with a uh, his name is Stuart Huff. He mentioned that to me, where he was like, "What if the road roadways were made out of a surface that that reflects heat instead of absorbs it, and then when it cools off, it's still putting out heat." And so then it's just like we're constantly in this cycle of heat. Might be a good idea. I have no idea. But, you know, that's not what we're researching. We're, we're still putting way fucking more money into fossil fuels and, uh, and natural gas as if that's a great alternative. But speaking of that, the, the next step would be to divest from these fossil fuel industries, right? We would have to uh, look for alternative and more sustainable and more importantly, affordable sources of energy i'm i'm all for you know solar powered batteries and things of that sort um i'm all for it uh i i think solar cars would do particularly well the electric cars still have uh the the drawback of the fact that you know like i have stuff plugged into a wall that is um that's like still using fossil fuels as a source of energy for electricity. So the, the electric cars kind of work on that same principle. So yes, you know, it's good because those cars aren't putting fossil fuels, putting, uh, 
um, dangerous emissions into the atmosphere. But in order to charge them, we're still running fossil fuels to create that energy. So, so there's, there, there's a little bit of a drawback in that. Um, but if we do make solar cars, solar powered cars with, with rechargeable batteries and things of that sort, they have to be affordable. People have to be able to afford that shit, right? There's this whole notion of green capitalism out there. Uh, where where it is people essentially pricing other people out. Like the only way that they can make these technologies is is by you know by just being too expensive to make. And then that's what the politicians use as a way to just be like, fuck it, we can't do it because it's too expensive. Where's the money going to come from? Well, you'll never you'll never hear them say that about fracking uh, or or adding another fucking pipeline through the center of the country through native lands, right? You'll you'll never fucking hear them saying you. Hey, where's the money going to come from when it comes to that? Uh, or building another fucking tanker that's going to collapse and dump oil into the ocean, right? And it's just like that's that's basic so oil and water don't mix. It's like ba first grade fucking science that you learn is like why would you do that? <laughs> it's like so. It has to be sustainable um, and, and it has to be affordable. So if we do switch, you know, l let's say in the next 15 years or 20 years or whatever, uh, we decide, OK, solar roofs are the way to go with the solar battery attached in your basement. And that's going to power your entire house. And we're going to transition ourselves off of this grid, which is highly inefficient, by the way. Uh, I think it's like 23 percent efficient in terms of converting energy, which is insane. Uh, whereas I think the lowest I've seen for solar and my numbers might be off. If my numbers are off. I apologize. Uh, I think for solar, it was like 48 or 49 percent or something, which is still like double the amount of energy that you're getting. So not only is solar more powerful and, you know, creates less waste, uh, it's 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 just a better <laughs> energy system. Um, but it's got to be affordable. Right. Like it's it's got to be a way that if if the, the 20 houses on my street need to afford it, we're not going to go broke con con converting our house to be more ecologically sustainable. If if I mean, that that's that's going to hinder that's that's a, that's a major way capitalism hinders progress in this regard. So. You know, everybody's kind of talking about um, rejoining the Paris Climate Accords, which is nice. And that's about it. <laughs> like, it's the, the, the thing with the Paris Climate Accords is like half a majority of the countries are not meeting their goals. And there's nobody monitoring that shit. Nobody's monitoring what's going on with the Paris Climate Accords. At all. Um, so... You know, rejoining the Paris Climate Accords is like, okay, I, I, I guess we're, it's another platitude. Like, yay! At least we have someone that doesn't say and do terrible things for the environment. They're gonna say nice things about the environment and then do terrible things for it. Like. It makes it, it it really doesn't change a whole lot. Like, okay, great, join the climate accords again. Cool. What you really need to do is figure out a way to divest from the fossil fuel industry and start looking at sustainable and more affordable sources of energy. The reason why they won't divest America specifically won't divest from the fossil fuel industry is because America is uh, run on a war economy. Uh, meaning that we need endless wars to sustain ourselves, which is insane, by the way, uh, that a country should operate the way that America does. Um, completely and utterly fucking insane. And because of that, because we're we're in the, in the business of manufacturing wars to go get other people's resources, uh, and the wars is a major way that we, you know, make our money. We're we're not gonna we're not just gonna be like well let's just cut the wars. 
if anything, if we go to solar power, I bet you there would be a bunch of Congress people that would be like, is there a way we can start a war on the sun? Can we invade the sun? How many troops can we put on the sun? Can the Penta can we increase the Pentagon budget? Because we're going to war against Ra, the sun god. <laughs> I will I will say that there is a a, a little bit of uh, cool news though that I saw uh, Mexico City has a bunch of um, uh, they they they've converted a bunch of highway pillars into vertical gardens and I think it's really really cool so I'm gonna play this thing I'm gonna turn off the sound because it's just like random music uh, but this is really really cool okay we don't need the sound. Uh, but it's really, really cool, right? They converted a bunch of highway pillars into uh, vertical gardens, and and it's it, it taking, you know, it's it's improving the the air quality around them. It's absorbing a lot of the pollution and the smog and everything. It's releasing more oxygen back into the atmosphere. Uh, and uh, one of the things that's really cool, I mean, it is being funded by the private sector, which means that eventually this thing will probably be collapsed if the way that if, if the way capitalism runs, uh, then it, this thing is not going <laughs> to continue too much further. Uh, a lot of the materials are made out of recycled plastic um, and uh, they're they're using inmates to to put this together. My hope is that they are paying the inmates, uh, you know, a livable wage uh, and they're not. Um, and they're not paying them slave labor as they do in America. But here we go again, right? The system is criticized it because it costs too much money uh, compared to planting more trees, which would be great. If, if Mexico City wanted to plant more trees, they could plant more trees. Um, and and nobody, nobody would be fucking mad about that shit at all, right? Like if Mexico City was like, let's plant 10 more, uh, 10 trees per highway or whatever, everybody would be fine with that. But this is a nice way to kind of yeah, beautify the city and you can still have trees because if it's funded by the private sector, um, that means that if they don't see a uh, ROI or return of investment, uh, you know, just saving the planet and reducing the uh, pollution and improving the quality of life for everybody within Mexico City, that's that's not a return on the investment. They need to see some cold, hard cash, baby. That's what they need to see. And if they don't see that, they'll kill this program. And which once again shows why capitalism is 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 essentially going to be the death of all of us. The other thing I wanted to talk about too, the 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 thing that kind of really made me think about this stuff is um, what we're going to see as patterns of climate change. Uh, this year, we saw a whole bunch of fires in the uh, in the West Coast, right? Um, California, Oregon, Nevada. These places had a bunch of forest fires, more than usual, and and they'll play it off as as if it is usual, right? Like like Trump was like, oh, it's about forest management. Nobody's managing the forest properly. Is well, can we get a district manager in the forests so that the Karens, when they go for their hikes, can have somebody to call to be like, I'm I'm mad about this bear poop. It's who wears the manager of the forest? You know, that's what we need. We need more managers in the forests. It's not that. It's because vegetation doesn't have uh, enough water to grow because there's not enough rainfall, and those dry conditions mixed with the heat will will ignite. And part of the problem is mismanaged forests, but that's because the there, there wasn't enough budgets to hire more managers for these forests. Uh, budgets. There you go. Another reason why capitalism is creating um, re creating the death of it. So, a bunch of forest fires, and, and the forest fires this year got so bad. It, this is so comical to me in, like, the darkest way, right? It got so bad that it was creating overcast in the East Coast. All that smog from, from the fire, all the smoke goes into the atmosphere and starts shifting east, and it covers the sky. So, it was overcast on the East Coast. Despite the fact that the sun was shining and it was like 85 degrees, still overcast because there's a bunch of smoke in the air. So now the whole country is being affected because of this. 
Well, great. W- what about the South and the East Coast? Don't they have their problem? Absolutely. We're, we saw a record number of hurricanes again this year. It was just hurricane after hurricane after hurricane, which meant that it would be really nice outside for a little bit. It would be like in the 60s and 70s outside. Up, uh, That's what it was this year. And then it would drop and then it would be rainy and it would rain nonstop and would, you know, we would get to like near flood conditions because all all of this hurt, you know, the, the, the storm systems are moving up. And we got screwed in the fall. That's just what happens. But don't worry, the winter camp comes around and we'll see snowfall. We'll see snowstorms like we saw the last couple of weeks. I mean, we had we had huge amounts of snow here. I have to, I've shuffled out a bunch of snow. Uh, I, and we've had maybe two or three of them. But in between them, it gets nice and warm, right? It goes up to the 40s or 50s. Like today, I think it's supposed to be up in the 40s. It's raining outside today. Uh, and this is the pattern that we're going to see. That these winters are going to be sporadic where all of a sudden we're going to get slammed with snow. And we're like, what the fuck are we going to do? And then all the snow melts and we're like, okay, we're in the clear. And then we, another one comes right around or or right along. Not only that though, but because of these temperature shifts, first of all, the animal life is going to be, is, is already fucking confused as to what the fuck is going on. They're hibernating, they're not hibernating, they're migrating, not migrating. So it changes the patterns of that. And because of changes patterns of that, changes the ecosystem. It's going to change the way the pathogens interact with us, which, is, which might be that we're going to see more pathogens come out. We're going to be affected by different pathogens. That's, a, that's another possibility. So this pandemic that we're in might repeat itself again with something completely new that we don't know about. That comes from, you know, migratory patterns of birds or migratory patterns of insects or something that is completely changed. This is the type of shit that climate scientists were were talking about for years and ignored. And when you bring up the, you know, when you bring up the ideations of climate change, people are people just kind of ignore it. People don't give a shit about it. It's not a sexy enough topic. Uh, but here's one solution that that, and this is a solution I disagree with, by the way. Uh, but I but I do want to bring it up because I think it's I think it's interesting. Um, here I want to do this real quick. Finland has uh, this is from futurism.com. Uh. They have Finland has uh, been proposing a permanent habitat uh, around Ceres, a massive asteroid and dwarf planet in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. Okay, and they say, in fact, they argue that the environment could be better than Earth since there's no adverse weather or natural disasters and plenty of living space to grow into. They propose a number of small spinning satellites attached to other via magnetic tethers to create a massive disc-shaped mega satellite. Artificial gravity approximately equal to that of Earth could be achieved by spinning these massive structures around Ceres. Or Ceres? Ceres. Sorry if I'm pronouncing that uh, incorrectly. So, and this is something I've heard a lot is the uh the idea of uh just let's just leave and we'll start space colonies and we'll start terraforming other planets you know and and we'll go there i i disagree with this vehemently because it's crazy we haven't figured out how to undo the damage on this planet and we still haven't learned the lessons of of doing the damage to this planet to begin with and we're just going to go to a different place and continue the same thing? Not just that. Who's going to live on this space colony? A bunch of rich people, I bet. Boy, it's going to take a lot of money to build a spacecraft and you know build a space station to, to let it grow and have a bunch of uh, people live there. Boy, I wonder who's going to get the opportunity to go and live in the space station without natural disasters 
and without possibilities of, uh, uh, of, of new diseases arising. Boy, I wonder who. This, and it, it'll definitely be the rich, and it'll definitely perpetuate the fucking class problem. 100%. <laughs> this is such a die. I just look at these ideas of like, oh, let's leave the planet and and come back, right? Like, let's let's leave the planet and and we'll go, you know, put our roots somewhere else, and we'll just start the cycle all over. Yeah, that's the problem. You're gonna start the cycle all over. You didn't realize what the fuck you did wrong to begin with, to to say, well, maybe we need a new fucking system in this new fucking planet that we find. You just go, oh, we'll just start all over again. We'll let capitalism pu pull ourselves up by our bootstrap on Ceres or Ceres or however it's pronounced. Fucking ridiculous. <laughs> Fix what's happening here first. Stop looking at the environment as as a as a commodity as as something that you can drive profit off of and look at look at us as stewards of the planet if we're stewards of the planet then yes we can still have modern technological advances but it's in tandem in symbiosis with nature if it's not then we're just combating nature and we're gonna lose all right i'm gonna look at some of your comments because you guys left a bunch of them uh, they, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to pronounce the, 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 the name here. Tang Grisner. I'm, I'm super sorry if I mispronounced that. If I butchered that, I, I very much apologize. Uh, they called the large tracts of green space, green corridors. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I think we need, um, we need them to be more consistent if, if we're going to actually, you know, cool down cities, we need them to be more consistent, not just in a park or you know in in the front of a fucking corporate hellscape like that's not what we need marky mark mark viola very funny comedian uh if i want to burn a hole in the ozone layer and emit chlorofluorocarbons that's my constitutional first amendment right promised to be my george washington jesus and ronald reagan first of all uh jesus didn't have the first amendment and uh, I rest my case there. Uh, <laughs> Aiden, good to see you. Uh, research is happening on those alternatives, but we need politicians to back it up too. Absolutely, 100%. Uh, the problem is there's no political will to look and, and pursue alternative technology. And not just that, because it always boils down to jobs a lot of times when they're trying to like uh, talk to people about it. It always boils down to jobs. And... There's plenty of jobs available if we switch over to something like solar, right? Those solar panels have to be taken care of. You have to calibrate them specifically. There needs to be, you know, and that's part of the part of the issue too. That a lot of people that talk about green capitalism, that talk about green advancements, is you know where how are we creating solar panels? I, I think lithium is 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 used in it, and that's part of the reason why Elon Musk was pro invading Bolivia. <laughs> um, uh, and maybe that's a little bit of hyperbole, but he was he was cool with like a coup in Bolivia <laughs> to go take their resources, right? So like, what do we do? What do we do when solar panels run out? How do we take care of it efficiently? Um, we just watched this episode of Star Trek Voyager, uh, and I know a a Aiden and I have talked about uh, Star Trek Voyager. He has he has not seen a lot of it, but they, but uh, and this is not a massive spoiler for the show or anything. It's just one of the species that they meet. Uh, carries antimatter waste and dumps it into a you know this this void region of space, um, and they talk about like oh well we used to do that shit too but we figured out how to uh, clean and recycle the antimatter so that it doesn't produce waste because that was like a goal that we had right the goal you the goal the society decided was how do we renew our waste so that we don't contaminate the environment that we live in or contaminate the space that we're going to be traveling through uh and there was another next next generation episode that talked about the same thing right uh, their warp fields they didn't realize was actually creating like spatial wakes in this in this particular region of space and it was disrupting life on a planet like the warp fields which is supposed to be this clean sustainable source of energy was was actually like just destroying this planet's life 
they, their their livelihoods were being completely disrupted because these these starships were flying in, in warp speed. Now this is all science fiction, obviously, but but again, they had the political will to say, okay, when we're in this region of space, we will not be using our warp. Yes, it's going to suck. Yes, it's going to take more time to get through this area and get the, you know this, that, and the third. And if we need to use our our you know warp speed, we'll go around. We'll travel around this thing. That's just what we're going to have to do because we can't we can't use this, you know, this thing that we think is sustainable, but is destroying. They all had the will to do something different and adapt and do something for the, the betterment of just the universe in general. And we can't even do something for the betterment of one city. Right. Like that's that's kind of what the problem is. Like Pennsylvania it was a hotbed of an issue because of the fracking argument. Are you going to be against fracking? Are you going to be against natural gas? And the Republicans kept saying, you know, because they're trying to paint Joe Biden as some fucking socialist, which he's not. <laughs> they were just like, nah, he's going to get rid of it. And he's like, no, I'm not going to get rid of fracking. <laughs> like, he was so adamant about it that even these leaders that sit there and talk about the fact that climate change is a reality we need to do something about won't do anything about it because they lack the political will to do it. Um and <laughs> so thank you for covering that. Yeah, I appreciate, I appreciate your comment. I, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, it's first grade science in most countries, but Betsy DeVos has made it, made it so that actually, uh, that's actually AP chemistry now. Also no public schools have enough money to offer AP chem. Yeah, but climate change wasn't a problem because of Betsy DeVos and her education. I mean, they, they were teaching this stuff when I was at school. Exxon has known about this problem for damn near 20, 30 years, and they've done nothing about it. So to, to say that this is a Betsy DeVos issue is, um, is, is you know, uh, uh, I, I will say inaccurate. Uh, right. And we have a, uh, a fiat currency. So even if we find the money, it shouldn't be a problem financially. No, I think trying to do good for the environment should not. We shouldn't be, if it's going to prevent the extinction of our species because overheating alone, by the by the way, uh, can like catastrophically destroy the, the like if if things get way too fucking hot. Let's say this trend keeps going. We increase our temperature of the planet by another four point four degrees Celsius. Our bodies can't handle that. Evolution doesn't work that fast. That's just the reality of it. So. Before evolution can catch up, we might be dead because our organs might not be getting enough blood to sustain themselves. Have you ever just been so overheated that you don't want to eat? Yeah, it's probably because you're, there's there's not enough blood going to your stomach because your body's all focused on decreasing your skin's temperature so that your body can cool off and it doesn't overheat. If you're also overheated, uh, your, your, your brain can react terribly. Like th this shouldn't be a financial issue at all. There shouldn't be there shouldn't be a roadblock to this financially, and there shouldn't be a political will to prevent our own extinction. Marky Mark, so what you're saying is the truth uh, about climate change is the truth, even if it's inconvenient, some kind of inconvenient truth. I hate you so much, Mark. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. Ah, uh, I. I dislike that you brought up a you 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 made me finish this with an Al Gore joke, you son of a bitch. Oh man. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, uh please make sure that you hit the like button, hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook, especially Facebook and YouTube. They often uncensor people, uh, un unsubscribe people, and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, um, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A dot com. 
there you'll find past episodes of uh, of various shows that I uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual comedy shows, the Forkful of Noodles live virtual comedy shows. Uh, the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website. But if you're also on financial stable ground, you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets and bonus content. You can go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to, to make any kind of financial contributions. But if you can't, it's not a necessity. Most of my stuff is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. And I hope to see you at the next video.